And away we go. It is the Nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken right here on BearcatJournal.com. As always, visit www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Download the app for Android, iPhone, everything Galactic. Go to the app. Get it delivered. They will bring it right to your front door pretty much anywhere inside the 275 loop or get down to Dayton, Kentucky. It has been gorgeous out. They have a phenomenal patio area. Sit outside. I would have loved tonight to sit outside and uh, have some galactic fried chicken out on the patio. That might be might be on the on the plans for the Brendel family here sometime over the weekend. But uh, make sure you're going to see our friends at Galactic Fried Chicken. Tell them pump it up. Save yourself 15%. All right, Aaron, some uh, somewhat surprising news in, in Bearcat land today. I was out, uh, I, I was getting ready to drop Kelsey off at volleyball practice. The pup and I were getting ready to go out to dinner uh, as we waited for Kelsey to get done with volleyball. And I, I got a call, said, hey, keep an eye on the portal. Sounds like Micah Adams Woods has just entered his name. And <laughs> that became true. That is, uh, let me be clear, not something I expected. Um, I did a little digging on the matter. It sounds like uh, with the portal closing on Thursday, teams are being, uh, what's the right word, uh, aggressive in uh, making sure that they they get what they need out of the transfer portal as we get to the end of uh, the entrance into the portal for this cycle. Crazy. And you see there's still almost 900 players that have entered the portal and not found a home. I'm not surprised. Yeah. There, there's like 700 that have found a home and like 850 that uh, are still on the vine. And there will be more between now and Thursday. Um, but uh, I, I can't get into to great detail. I've done that more on BearcatJournal.com on, on what's really going on here. But first off, Look, you got to give Micah credit. The, the, the guy was here for four years. He went through and experienced a lot of uh, turmoil around the program. There was more losing, really, than has happened here in 15 years. Almost as much losing as has happened here in 30-plus years. Um, but he was steady. He would, if he had stayed, probably – broken the all-time record for minutes, played as a Bearcat, maybe for games started as a Bearcat. Now, granted, he would have played five seasons, and nobody's really ever done that before. But um, there is that. Look, he stayed. He worked. He got better. I, I know he was a guy that, that both staffs loved in terms of uh, dealing with him in practice and the effort he brought every day. So... <clears throat> I, 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 the staff wanted to keep it like you're, you're bringing in two guys that have never dribbled a basketball in a division one basketball game. And it would have been nice to have a guy with two years in the system and four years in the program on the roster to help um, ease that transition. And so in that regard, um, you know, a, 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 not a significant blow to the program, but definitely a a, a, a decision, a move that kind of changes the way you look at, especially the early part. Like, this was always the thing for me. I think eventually you're going to see Davion, Dede Thomas, and, and Jizzle James kind of grab hold of that point guard position. But early... It, it would have been nice to have Micah Adams Woods on this roster. So that does change some of the off season equation. Yeah. The fan base, I feel like was really weird with Micah Adams Woods. I, I feel like he was largely underappreciated for what he did here. Uh, he did average last season, just, just last year, uh, 9.1 points, 3.2 assists, 2.1 rebounds, shot 37% from three. And that was, that, that fell uh, during the second half of the season when he went, cold i feel like he was up in the mid 40s uh prior to that um yeah teams kind of started closing out on him a little differently they weren't yeah. leaving him as as open as he had had been earlier in the year that's 
that's basketball. Like, you know, the season plays out and you either go up the scouting report or down the scouting report. His shooting went up the scouting report. Um, Waterford always finds this level, right? Yeah. But uh, he, his aggressiveness uh, toned down um, while still remaining aggressive. It was not as circus act as it we had seen. And I feel like he started to really come into his own last year. I, he was a guy who became far less of a liability with the ball in his hands. And he was a guy that there were, there, look, there were some, there were some bad turnovers towards the end of the season with Mike Adams woods. That's inarguable, but largely you knew what you had. And I got to just care of the ball and make good pass, smart passes. He didn't, he wasn't flashy. He was just solid. Like that was, that was always the thing with him. I, I know you like, I know you were down on him the prior year. Yeah, because he would get to the rim and and not go strong and try to dipsy do. Oh, oh yeah, he always tried to do a reverse or like a, a full Michael Jordan. Like what? A, well, what that's because doing? like for the for the ten games prior, he got his shit smacked off the backboard <laughs> pretty much every time he went to the rim. So he was trying something different. <laughs> Neither of them worked. Um, but but like I said, I mean, I think I think he's going to go down as largely underappreciated, and I, I think that. As West took over prior or after after the the previous regime um, and and all of that, uh, I, I think he was a guy that really helped this this tra- team transition to the West sure. Miller era. And he seemed bought in; like it, he never seemed like there was a, a tug and a, a pull and tug between him and and West Miller. And you know, you listen to West talk about him in post game press conferences and things of that nature, like. He was he was in line with what Wes wanted to do. So losing a guy like that, as you're breaking in two young guards, um, is is significant. Like mm. it's not crushing. It's not like a like a, a major loss. But now also the other thing, the the reality of the situation is between uh, David DeJulius, Landers Nolly, Mike Adams Woods, Jeremiah Davenport, you're losing four of your top five scores. And you're losing 50 points a game going into the Big 12. Like this is this is going to be as new look a roster as you could uh, draw up in, in I mean, terms of top of the roster production. That's four of your top five, top six minutes as well. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's a ton of minutes between those guys. Um, I don't know. I mean, there there's a saying something about the 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 devil you know versus the the devil you don't. Yeah. Um, we know what we had in Mike Adams Woods, and I don't think it was going to get worse. Even going to the Big Twelve, I don't think it was going to. There, I don't, I don't think you would have seen it. I mean, a giant I think you drop. could look at what he did, or a lot of times struggled to do against a higher level of competition, and say he would have had to have taken another significant jump in his development to be consistently good every night in the big 12. I think that's fair. Sure. But, but you also, also have two guys. Him, let me finish the point. We had also seen him consistently take, you know, incremental jumps in his development every season. And, you know, you, you're going to, you're talking about a guy that again, 121 starts and probably would have been in line to be the, the guy that played more minutes in red and black than anyone ever. That's wild. I don't know that you were going to lean into him for 25 minutes a game. No, I don't think so either. Like and you so, recruited so get, Davion Thomas right. and Jizzle James to play. You didn't recruit That's, them to come here and sit. I, I just I don't I don't know that I know there's a lot of people who are excited about this move because they're like, oh, we can bring in somebody better than Mike Adams Woods. Fine. I just <sighs> again I, I think you were looking at him for maybe barring injury. Uh 15 ish minutes a game. 17. Yeah, I think that probably would have been a rough about right. And I know that some t- people were like five. Like, no. If he was here, he was, he was gonna play more than five minutes a game. Getting that type of time, I think that you're probably going to make that move up because you're always gonna be fresh legs. Like you're only playing 15 minutes a game. You've been a starter, you're always gonna be fresh. So I don't know. Uh, and we'll we'll see what you get. Because maybe you don't get a guy who's better than Mike Adams Woods out of the portal. The, the question is, I mean, I guess we'll transition here. The question then becomes, do they go look for a guard? 
which I, I don't think is a guarantee. I think it's a possibility, but do they go look for a guard or, you know, we know the name that's, that's been thrown around and, and had a lot of, uh, Ballyhooed juice, uh, a guy like Aziz Bandago from Utah Valley. That is, is it's widely been reported that Cincinnati is one of the, the schools that are, uh, pursuing him the hardest, uh, still don't have anything definitive on what his plans are, uh, leading up to uh, ultimately making a decision, but, um, there was even a, one of the recruiting show on 24 seven tonight mentioned Cincinnati is one of the primary teams that were, that are in the hunt for him. So does this simply open up a spot for a guy like Aziz Bandago where you don't have to do anything else to your roster? Or do you look at it and say, okay, well, we had, we had already kind of had whatever they are. We'd already kind of had a plan in place if we were to land disease that didn't include Micah, because I do believe the Micah thing happened over the past, like over the weekend into this week. Um, so do you go that route? And now maybe there's two more additions, or do you say, yeah, puppy, come here, puppy. Come here. Um, or do you say, look, you know, we've got one spot. This is, we're going to bring this guy in. We'll make the roster work as is. Uh, and essentially in that, in that world, if you do that, you are putting all of your trust in Day Day Thomas and Jizzle James. And you are entering the season first year in the big 12 without a net. That could go one of two ways, right? It could be brilliant because they have to live up to those expectations. Correct. Or, you know, it could be, it could be pretty rough. Could the only thing, rough. the only thing that scares me about going in, if those are your two, and that's it, if you don't go get another guard, is if either of them gets injured, you are up Shit's Creek. Yeah, I mean, then you, you what? You probably you're looking at like a, a CJ Frederick giving you minutes at point. Uh, you're looking at maybe you know Seamus Lukosius becomes. Uh, a guy that initiates offense, right? Like, you know, you, you have somebody bring the ball up the floor and then get the ball to him and you're running your offense through him. Like it's just, it, it makes things, it, it makes things a little bit more of a high wire act. And that's, that's why I had said for a while, like, you know, that I thought the smart move was to bring Micah back because it just provides a level of insurance. And if you don't have a, a, a third, a, you know, a third option at point guard, that doesn't mean it's it's going to blow up in your face. But it does mean, you know, you're, you're going through year one in the Big 12 without a safety net, and you're putting a whole lot of trust in your evaluations. Now, I think some will disagree with me, um, but I think this staff has proven to be pretty good at evaluating talent. So far, has everybody worked out? No, but find me a place where everybody works out. Like, guess what? Duke and Kentucky have had like the the number one or number two recruiting crap class for for like the last decade, and not every guy's worked out. So, you know, nobody hits a thousand percent. Um, but I, you know, the, the puppy's anxious about about Micah's loss. <laughs> She's she's anxious. She doesn't like the the thought of, you know, playing without a net. But hey, my par- partially part of me says, sink or swim, man. Like, are you guys good enough? Come in, come in and show us if you're good enough or not. There are going to be growing pains. We know that. Um, there will be more growing pains without a guy like Micah on the roster. But. If they're good enough, and the staff believes both of them that are good enough, it's gonna it'll work out in the long run. Yeah, just makes you wonder if uh, this had happened earlier during the transfer portal process, it would have changed if, everything. If perhaps they go after a guy who has sure elite, well, there, elite there was, speed, there was pr- no, <laughs> um, there was probably three or four different guys that they they didn't go on. Right. That would have solved that problem because they thought Michael was staying. So yeah, that, it, it definitely 
would have been a different transfer process. All right. Somebody well, I think mad right now. I was gonna say I think the dogs had enough, so we'll call it there. <laughs> that's uh that's the nightcap. We'll uh Dave and I'll talk about this a lot more. We'll also talk about the new defensive line commit that they got tonight. Uh and Abby Jump, women's assistant basketball coach, will join us as well tomorrow night on the BCJ podcast. For Callie Brendel, I'm Chad Brendel, he's Aaron Smith. This is the nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken. See ya. <laughs>